It was probably the most amount of cheating I've seen within Halo since the launch of the game. Like, stuff is wild as they switch over to easy anti-cheat. It is just surprising how absurd and how rampant it's getting to the at this point. Now, obviously, these are just like singular clips that you see on Twitter, right? I don't really know if it's anything that's really that widespread. Most of it, or what I'm seeing when it comes to any form of cheating that's going on, is happening mainly in ranked well, like last stream i played for about close to three hours and didn't come across a single cheater while playing ranked i also i am bad at halo so there is that because i think i'm like trying to grind my way back into diamond <laughs> last stream i did was the most i ever played ranked in a long time and i didn't come across any cheaters but i think this might be more uh indicative of like high level gameplay i haven't really seen much in the way of cheating when it comes to uh social modes Though, we did see the community manager, Unishek, stream and get hit with a cheater. I'll show you, this is, what, this is what happened with Uni when he was streaming and got hit with a cheater. Keep it here for a second, homies. Let me see what's going on. For anyone wondering, just completely shit on the cheater. But we're not going to give him the attention, so... I just want to say I love the fact that he said I just shit on a cheater. <laughs> That's just hilarious in my opinion. That just shows you like Uni, man, Uni's one of the real ones. You know, we're lucky to have Uni as a community manager. And that you can see that he was in big team battle. Now, obviously, Uni being the community manager, probably more susceptible to having people stream snipe him, people following him, stream sniping and cheating to, to do it because he works at 343 and stuff like that. So it's definitely a much more wild specific type of case. We're seeing a lot of cheating. Like this, there's these, I just have clips that I've been finding online. These are the most popular ones. This guy's floating around on illusion. You know, just one tapping with aimbot floating around the map like a madman. Like what is this game that is right now? So by the way, look at this guy's aim. He, he has aimbot and floating around a map. Can't hit a guy with a shock rifle, which is like one of the easiest weapons to hit people with. And he still gets killed by the guy. So that's why you gotta love cheaters just being terrible at the game and that's why they cheat because they can't keep up it's it makes me wonder if it's like a chicken or the egg thing right now right where it kind of feels like it's either are they cheating because they recently switched to the easy anti-cheat and they want to show the 343 like you can't stop us we are the cheaters kind of thing or are they cheating because they can do it easier now since easy anti-cheat is a much more widely used anti-cheat that uh, it can be kind of taken advantage of. Uh, here's another clip right here of somebody just, just getting dunked on by a cheater. That is wild. <laughs> so you get the point. People floating around, around the map, one tapping people. Community managers coming across on their own stream as well. And he doesn't stream that often either. So like they were like deliberately going after him on that one. Weird to see this influx, especially since we've seen MCC have issues with cheaters as well, which uses an easy anti-cheat. And then 343 switched over to easy anti-cheat, even though they know they know that MCC is having a cheating issue. Maybe not as widespread, but it's definitely there. One of those things you definitely need to take in consideration. And also the fact that you see this much cheating happening online, right? It creates the accusation claims all over the place. I mean, I see this all the time within the Call of Duty community. Basically, when anyone does halfway decent in the game, <laughs> people are crying cheater. And it's that it's just don't you don't want to have that within your community. That's exactly what causes like toxicity. It even creates like YouTube content of people like basically being hacking chasers, I guess you call them. Like people just like make content about how hackers play in this game specifically. See it all the time within Call of Duty, like people built like name brands, like popular channels off of just calling streamers cheaters without any like actual proof and, and can create a really bad toxic behavior to the whole thing. They know they just don't care. No, they definitely care. 343 don't want cheaters in their game. Okay, no developer wants cheaters in their games, right? Because it just one ruins the entire experience for everyone. And if you come across cheaters, then like people are just gonna stop playing. Like it's a direct impact to the experience that will make people full stop play your game. Or like back in Warzone 1, when cheating was so prevalent that we saw games like Splitgate blow up because of the amount of cheaters happening. It was during the summer, 
things were kind of down when it came to like new fun releases that happened within the gaming industry. Splitgate releases, which is a great game, kind of plays off that Halo feel, new type of experience utilizing portals as a shooter. Even though people hate to admit it, there is a lot of crossover between Call of Duty and Halo, myself included. I'm one of those people. And so we saw Splitgate blow up because of it. If something like this goes wild, like really wild, right? Like directly affecting the casual audience, this could be directly affecting population numbers, could it be directly affecting sales. So 343 do care about their cheaters and they want to get rid of them pretty much as soon as possible, but in the right way. They can't just ban everyone individually right off the bat. And I'll show you a pirate software video who explains it perfectly, who worked at Blizzard, who involved with banning cheaters and why they did it the way they did. Then why switch to easy anti-cheat? I think mainly because it's an industry standard type of anti-cheat, right? A lot of games use it. Most notably, probably right at this point, would be Apex Legends, even though we know like Apex is going through its issues right now. But there's a lot of other games out there before that use easy anti-cheat that have had no issues. I saw someone with a grab hammer flying in Fiesta. I lost it. Oh no. See, like, yeah, like that's just exactly what I was talking about. It's like once you start seeing them creeping into the social experience, that's when things are gonna get a big problem. If you just see them at the high end of ranks, like it just kind of happens, right? Obviously, you're trying to minimize it as much as possible, but you need to make sure that like, if they start affecting the social experience, that's when you're gonna see some issues really start happening. I mean, if there was one mode to cheat, no, <laughs> no you shouldn't cheat in any mode, obviously, but like, at least it's in like Fiesta where like you, no one really cares, right? You're just kind of blowing stuff up. That's harmless cheating, right? No, that's actually still awful. Don't quote me, don't clip me on that. <laughs> Pirate Software talked about it again, like I said, he used to work at Blizzard, he used to work, be involved with cash and cheaters and things like, that, things like that. And they talk about their process of why they do the things they do when it comes to dealing with cheaters. So when you wait three to six months, you get a shitload of their customers and then you ban them on the same day. And you know what they do? They get mad at you. They're like, I didn't deserve to be banned. I never cheated before in my life. And I drink those tears. They're delicious. You definitely deserve to be banned. Get shit on. And then they go back to the person who sells the bot and they go, your bot got me banned. You're a piece of shit. I want my money back. And they start charging back all of their stuff. And why do you wait three to six months? Because PayPal still allows you to do chargebacks in that time period. And then they start charging back on the bot creators. And that guy has a really goddamn bad day. Exactly. <laughs> so, a method to the madness, right? Yeah, talks also talks about another thing too, about when you make a ban on people that you don't do it as soon as they get into the game which is what you would think you would do. But the thing is, it's a bit of a social test behind it as well, where if you ban people as soon as they get into the game, right? As soon as they download a new cheat or something like that, and then you ban them right away, they go, oh, it's that cheat specifically that will get me banned or get me blocked or you know temporary banned or something like that. I just won't use that one. Where if you wait like three to six months for doing ban waves, it leaves a bit of ambiguity. Ambu What's the word? Ambu. It leaves a bit of ambiguity when it comes to what was the cause for them getting banned. And so there's a bit of psychological warfare as well, if you tie it along with the technological warfare that goes along with dealing with hackers within your game. So when it comes to running it back all to Halo, I don't really see any immediate changes happening anytime soon. Easy Anti Cheat's new, right? We've only had it in the game for a few weeks now at this point. I think it's what, two weeks now we've had it in the game now. 343 is gathering that data. They're, they're keeping an eye on things like, yeah, things are gonna be running wild for a bit, but maybe in a month or two, we'll start seeing some changes, maybe some stricter assets when it comes to easy anti-cheat. Again, I'm not a developer. I don't know how easy anti-cheat could be tailored to Halo Infinite specifically or what the, the needs are for 343, but I can assume there's something there, right? Yeah, they wanna create some confusion for the hackers and exactly. Yeah, that talks about it again as well, where you're doing those ban ways where like they do chargebacks on the cheaters because <laughs> I mean, obviously, if you're a cheater, you you don't care about other people. So you're going to charge, get char you want to do a chargeback on paying for your cheats because you got banned. Right. And so that person who provided the cheats 
has to give up all this money. <laughs> you know a person who like cheats in a game, you're like, yeah, I got banned, but I don't want to charge back my cheats because that'll be bad on the cheater, the, the cheat providers end. I don't want to ruin their day and take resource and take funding away from them. You don't care about people. And so you're going to do a charge back anyways, right? <laughs> I mean, I think Call of Duty does a similar thing where they'll just put cheaters into their own lobbies and then match against each other. And it'll just be some wild wacky stuff like Ricochet, it can, while being rather invasive when it comes to its anti-cheat, does a decent job right like i haven't actually come across any cheaters in my experience playing call of duty uh since i've played it on steam and i have like almost 600 hours into the call of duty franchise on steam compared like with uh mono for two and mono for three so i put a good amount of time in haven't come across a single cheater again i'm kind of like above average if not average when it comes to call of duty i'm not a crazy movement kid like uh you know like shotzi generation of players nowadays it's like again cheating kind of comes more of that high-end gameplay which a lot of Twitch streamers are striving for that high-end gameplay, which that's the people you come across cheaters. And those are the people who would clip something, have the ability to clip or bother to clip something, share it on Twitter, share it on Reddit to then highlight it. So then it can be a, look like a bigger problem than it actually might be. But still, it definitely is a serious issue. Like Lucindy was talking about over here. She saw a cheater in Fiesta. Like, that's bad. That's really bad. That's more alarming to me than seeing cheaters in like 1800 level Onyx. Because 1800 level Onyx is like what 0.1% of the population of people who play the game. If you see it in social, that's where it's going to become a real issue. They do the splat where people just die from falling. Yeah, I've seen the clips too of people who get the splat and they're like, what happened? The game's broken. How did this happen? It's like, no, you're cheating. You're being a jerk. I'm sure they had some expectations of an increase of cheaters because it's also a bit of a psychological warfare, right? With cheaters where like, if you change anti-cheats, right? They'll be like, okay, we'll prove that we could still cheat kind of thing. A lot of times cheaters just cheat because they want to prove that, you know, they can rather than actually want to like ruin people's days kind of thing. You know, they're just trolling. They're being jerks. <laughs> you can see the cheats that we saw earlier, right? Like people aren't really cheating to, you know, sneakily improve right that that's obvious <laughs> yeah like sam was talking about floating around the map we saw a bunch of people one shot aimbotting like wild stuff like the cheats that are going around are not discreet so they're doing it the troll mainly i guess kind of like in closing when it comes to like that kind of stuff when it comes to cheating hey like i said like we're not really going to see immediate changes uh 343 needs to gather the data and then you see who's cheating uh you know there's a lot of different types of data points you can gather with that kind of stuff and then you have to kind of gather it all you see the repeat offenders and what are the trends and things like that which takes time